Geneticists studying ancient DNA discovered a girl whose parents were two different species. In a Siberian cave, researchers found a small piece of bone. The bone was thought to be lost forever, and it was the case for decades, until it was eventually discovered by a brave researcher named Vivienne Slon. The researcher took her courage a step further when she attempted to extract some DNA from it for further analysis. The findings she made upturned years of research. Thanks to her work, we are now armed with newly uncovered information on how our old ancestors survived on Earth. As you surely are, we are well aware that thousands of years ago, various species that are currently extinct roamed our planet. But this finding was the pioneering discovery of a direct hybrid ancestor that turned everything we knew about our ancient ancestors upside down. This particular bone fragment has an extraordinary story behind it, which is why it got so much attention. It tells our story. Currently, all humans are of one species, Homo sapiens. The first appearance of the Homo sapiens was about 200,000 to 300,000 years back. However, it wasn't always the case. The Australopithecines were actually the earliest humans known to us. They included various species that were bipedal. Current research says that these hominins, distant relatives of the Homo sapiens, were first found 4 million years back in Africa. Researchers also believe that evolution saw the emergence of the different Homo species that came after. First, their legs evolved to be longer and better suited for walking and running. Afterwards, their brains went through change and grew bigger and more complex to handle more intelligent activities and thoughts. As one can expect, these evolutionary changes brought some behavioral changes too. As evidenced by archaeological findings, early humans took to hunting and developed a more carnivorous appetite. About 700,000 years back, the emergence of the species called the Homo heidelbergensis was recorded in Eurasia and Africa. According to scientists, they looked more like us, believed to be building the evolutionary foundation for how their succeeding species would look like. They also behaved differently from the preceding species. They were more organized and more handy with tools and sculpting. The Homo heidelbergensis exhibited more intelligence than their predecessors. Some of them even used more sophisticated tools than the usual ones in order to improve the way they did things, including hunting. Some researchers believe that individuals from these species may even have formed teams to hunt down bigger animals, which was evidence of social bonding, a character that wasn't present in their predecessors. However, regardless of the many strengths of this species, it still went into extinction. However, they kept quiet the proof of their existence. About 390,000 years back, sometime around the Middle Pleistocene era, a great number of species broke out from this single ancestor, eventually giving birth to the modern human species. It is believed that several hominid species may have lived together through the years. Their coexistence was not only a fruit of mere tolerance as scientists believed that there was interbreeding between these species, giving birth to various others. But until the German theory, there was no solid proof of this theory. Up until recently, it has been believed that interbreeding between individuals of different species cannot occur, and in case it did, it wouldn't be successful. However, in an article in 2018, Forbes' Michael Marshall pointed out that although the offspring of a donkey and horse, the mule, is always infertile, the results of such crossbreeding amongst other animals may give different results, and it wasn't a rule to abide by. The mule is the outcome of a breeding relationship between a horse with 64 chromosomes and a donkey with 62. Therefore, the offspring of this pairing ends up having an odd number of 63 chromosomes. An odd number of chromosomes means that the animal's genetic code is defective, which can only result in the animal being unable to reproduce. However, it is not the case with certain primates like the orangutans and the gorillas who share the same chromosome numbers. Proof has been found that at different times in the past, some form of interbreeding had happened between bonobos and chimpanzees. This theory offers an explanation as to why some wild felines can interbreed successfully with no issues. The highly praised liger isn't a naturally occurring species. As is common knowledge, lions and tigers live in natural habitats that are far apart. However, many zoos around the world have this animal, bigger than both the lion and tiger, and still has the ability to reproduce. More importantly, it is believed that early humans had the same chromosome count. 
This implies that interbreeding was possible among the various species. According to researchers, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthal mated shortly after the Homo sapiens migrated from Africa into different parts of the world, taking over it all eventually. This can explain why up to 2% of Neanderthal DNA can be found in a larger number of Asian and European populations. However, it wasn't just the Homo Neanderthal that the Homo sapiens mated with. They have also mated with another hominid group called the Denisovans. The Denisovans are a recent find in the study of evolution. Up until recently, there was no hard proof that they existed. A team of researchers from the Max Planck Institute publicized the outcome of their most recent research in 2010. After the team performed their analysis on a tooth and the finger bone discovered in Siberia, new evidence of an entirely different species was uncovered. The scientists named the species Denisova to honor the cave where they found the specimens that led to a groundbreaking discovery in archaeology. Initially, the ordinary-looking fragment was just kept with the other fossils that were excavated from the cave with it. Nothing else was found or revealed for years until Samantha Brown from the University of Oxford studied them closely. When she studied the bone's proteins, it dawned on her that the bone actually belonged to an early human. After this great discovery, paleogeneticist Slon received the bone. Upon more analysis, she started investigations on the DNA in the fragment. Her findings were more than expected, she definitely not expect to make a discovery that would change the entire history of human race. At first, the bone seemed not to be of great significance, it was merely an inch long. The bone seemed to have belonged to a female teenager aged about 13 years. The woman is believed to have died about 90,000 years back when this little part of the Altai Mountains was occupied by the Denisovans. However, when Swan carefully studied the DNA in the mitochondria of the fragment, she was stunned at what the discovery she made. It is common knowledge to any genetics that this particular cell structure is inherited from a mother only. This particular case revealed that the found teenager was a descendant of a female Neanderthal. Swan, when she spoke to National Geographic in 2018, she said that she was very excited at first and became even more excited when they began to study the nuclear DNA. Genetic knowledge revealed that the fragment was actually a component of both the male and female ancestry, which meant that the researchers would be able to learn more about the ancient child's father. It was at that moment that they knew there was something odd about the bone. She was amazed at what she found at the finding that she thought she was mistaken at first. Had she messed with the data unwittingly? Could the sample have been tampered with in the laboratory without her noticing? Slon saw that she didn't make any mistakes after she inspected her study further. While the teenage girl's mother had the DNA of a Neanderthal, the analysis showed that her father was actually of another species, he was a Denisovan. And that was not the end. As she ran her analysis, the paleogeneticist found that there were actually astounding variations in the girl's general genetic makeup. This is related to a concept called heterozygosity, which means that in the case your parents were close relatives, your genes would have very little heterozygosity. However, in the case your parents are from different species, your genes will show crazy high levels. In a discussion with National Geographic, Richard E. Green, who was a computational biologist, offered even more insight into ancient DNA. It's heterozygous out the wazoo, that's really what nails it Slon had actually come to uncover one of the greatest treasure troves of human evolution, the first evidenced offspring born from the interbreeding of two species, the very first generation. In an interview with a London newspaper, The Evening Standard, Slon said that several previous studies had revealed that Denisovans and Neanderthals must have produced hybrid offspring together. She also added that they never expected to have a luck as great as finding a real offspring of the two species. Speaking to National Geographic, David Reich, a scientist, said that a finding like the one Slon made was remarkable. Before that, it never seemed possible to actually catch the phenomenon in action. What were the odds of finding a real human being that's the actual first-generation offspring of a hybrid? Svan Pabo from the Max Planck Institute expressed his excitement about the finding, saying that finding the Denisov and Neanderthal child in the midst of the few sequenced genomes belonging to ancient humans was brilliant. He further said that Denisovans and Neanderthals must have copulated more often than we thought. 